Hello boys and girls. So this week our focus is going to be on reviewing all the math skills that we have gone over all year long. Um, this will be our final week of doing um, all things first grade instruction because next week is going to be just a lot of a fun week. So what I'm here to do is go over all of our math skills that you need to know and all of our reading skills in one big whopper of a week. And um, there's just going to be a lot of activities just to kind of review all the little things that we just got to make sure we have those perfect fine-tuned skills. So these videos are just here as your instruction. And um, the, the sheets that go with it, you are going to be doing those totally independently. But if you have any questions, these videos are here for you to go back and review if you need help. But also, um, if you need additional help and the videos just aren't cutting it and you still need more help, let me know or let Ms. Remedy know and we will do one-on-one -on -one Zooms with you and we will do some extra tutoring and just let us know, hey, look, time is still just really a struggle for me or measurement is just really not helping me. So let us know and we're here to help you. So let's start off today um, with just the, our basic addition. And We've talked a lot about our touch points. We've talked a lot about adding on number lines. We've talked a lot about that kind of stuff. But what I really want to talk about is how can we make that transition from doing all those different tools to doing more mental math, okay? And so what we're going to think about is how we can think about math in doubles, which we've done our song with doubles. So we're going to start off with doubles. And then we're going to think about doubles plus one, doubles minus one, or I like to call them almost doubles. So some of those, what, I, what we think about, let me kind of angle it a little bit, and I'm going to write the very best that I can. Um, some of those things that we like to think about are, um, if I had the number five, the double to five, that has a glare on it, there we go, the double to five would be five. And we know from our song that we've done is five plus five equals ten, again, but if I were to do... Um, the almost double, it would look like five plus six or five plus four. And what that is, is just one away from that bottom number. It's just one more or one less. So either way, my ones are not lined up. That is a huge no-no, Miss Nash. There. But either way, it is an almost double which makes it easy because what we can say is, well, I know that five plus five equals 10 right there, right? So then let's do five plus six. In my brain, what I'm saying is, well, this is just one more than my five plus five because five, six, that's just one more. So I'm gonna say five, 10, 11, because it's just one more, one higher. And so I know that's 11. Now, if I know five plus five is the same here, but let me look right here. This is the same, but this is one less. So I'm going to go ahead and do a double because that's easy for me. But then I'm going to do one less. So I'm going to say 5, 10, 9. And I'm going to back off one. Okay? So I'm going to use those skills of adding one or minusing one. Adding one, minus one. So let's do another one. Let's say that I have my double of 7 plus Seven. Okay, I know because of our, our songs, we go seven plus seven equals 14, let's lean. So I'm gonna put my 14 right there. And that's easy enough when I see my sevens. However, what if I had seven plus eight? Those are just one away from each other, so it's almost a double. So I know that that one was one more. So I'm gonna say seven, 14, because that's what the double is, but that's one more, so I'm gonna say 14, 15 because it's one more okay and again what I got to do was a lot faster math and a lot more mental math and I didn't have to worry about doing my touch points or my fingers I could automatically look at that and say 7 14 15 boom there's my answer the same thing if we were to take 7 plus 6 okay if you notice this is almost double it is one away so what I'll say is 7, 14, but that's one less. So my answer will be one less. 7, 14, 13. And my answer is 13, okay? Here's something that if you're going to stay with me, fantastic. This is too confusing. Ignore me. But look right here. I can also do 8's double. 
If I did eight double, this is one less than eight. So what I can say is eight, 16, 15, because it's one less, okay? A lot of people, what they like to do is find the biggest number and double it and then back off one. That's one strategy that you can do. So it would be seven, 14, 13, okay? So you can do both of those ways. Find the biggest one, double it, and then back off one, okay? The other way, you can find the smallest one, double it, and add one. But either way, you're getting the double, and then you're adjusting that double just a little bit, either higher or lower, depending on what the other number is, okay? So when I send out that worksheet for you to do today, you're gonna see some numbers that are doubles plus one or doubles minus one. And they're gonna look a lot like this. You might see five plus four, or you might see six plus five, because they're just one away. So you're gonna practice that double plus one, double minus one. And so you're gonna practice doing that double and then just adding one more or taking away one, okay? And that part, you'll get used to pretty easily. There is one more on here that gets a little bit more tricky, and that is when we do doubles plus two and doubles minus two, okay? And let's give an example. If I had the number seven, now a plus one or a minus one would give me the numbers eight or six because it's one bigger and one smaller. But the harder part is when it's two away. And so we're gonna do the same skill and the same strategy, but we're gonna add a little bit further and a little bit backwards, a little bit further. And what I mean by that is, Instead of doing eight, my next number in the number line is nine. So I'm gonna take seven plus nine, okay? The other, well, I'll go to this, the next way. Now, if I'm taking the same strategy, my baseline, my, my idea is that I'm still sticking with my doubles because doubles is what we know and doubles is what makes it easy. And we can say seven, 14, because that was, my, my double was seven, right? And I know that that is two away. So I gotta take seven, 14, 15, 16. So in my mind, I'm just bumping it up two. This might seem complicated and you do not have to do this part. This is what I'm just showing you to say that nine is actually seven and then there's two left over, okay? I put the seven here because it made my seven a double. So I could say seven, 14, and that got me part of the way, and then I just need two more to push me the rest of the way. So I say seven, 14, 15, 16, okay? Let me do another one and show you. So right now, just kind of watch what I'm doing and let it kind of sink in, and then we'll practice some. So if I had six, my double plus one or double minus one, I would do either a five or a seven, right? But now I'm gonna do plus two. So it I would do six plus eight, okay? And so in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, this is six plus eight. Well, this is two away. These are two away from each other. So if I had six, it would be six, 12, 13, 14. So in my mind, I'm just bumping it up two. I have six, 12, 13, 14. So my answer is 14, okay? Some people are more comfortable with subtraction and that's okay. But again, because these are two away, what I would say is eight, 16, 15, 14. Either way, because these two numbers are two away, we're gonna double it and then either add two or subtract two, whichever way gets us back to the number that these two belong with. So let's say that I have um, a five. And then if we're doing plus five, a doubles plus one, I would be using a six or a, a four, but I'm actually gonna do a seven because that would be two away. This is just to help y'all practice. Okay, I'm gonna challenge you to write this down and push pause and see if you can figure this out or actually just look at it and do mental math and see if you can figure it out before I explain it. I'm gonna explain it now, but if you've already figured it out, you're on a roll. Now, I know that my double of five is 10. So I say five, 10, 11, 12, because that is just two more, okay? So I'm gonna put my 12 there. If you knew that was 12, you're already getting this. If you didn't know that was 12, 
totally fine because we're not quite there yet. So let's keep on practicing. Let's do a couple more. And we're gonna do, um, let's choose nine. And I'm gonna keep all my numbers below 10. And the reason is, well, I'll tell you the reason in just a second. Nine and then um, I'm gonna go two less because if I do two more, it would be 11. And let me show you what that would look like. If I keep my tens place and my ones place, remember in that house, they do not want to share a room. We have the ones place and we have the tens place. They don't share rooms. So nine and one are 10 buddies. So that makes 10. That guy goes over there in the tens place. This guy stays in the ones place. And now I have one, two, and my answer is 20. Okay. So see how addition gets easier as the more we do it. We don't need those touch points as often because we're starting to get that mental map down. So that's why I'm not going to use anything bigger than nine because after nine, we just start regrouping and we just start adding and we're starting to use the tens place and then it becomes easier and easier. So I'm going to bring it down to, which is, I'm going to use a seven. And a lot of times we might look at that and we might say, whoa, too hard, right? Too much. But I know my trick now. Now, if I start with the nine, seven is less than the double. So if I did nine and nine to get nine plus nine equals 18, is that not me? I think so, in our song. I need to really play our song again. But if it's nine plus nine equals 18, well, what I did to get to nine in my mind, I had to add two to it. But I, I can't just put two in there, I gotta take those two back out in, at the end. So I'm gonna say is nine, 18, but let me get back down to, so I say 18, 17, 16, okay? That might've sounded confusing because that one was kind of using a little bit of subtraction with it, okay? Another way you could have done that is to start with the seven and jump up. So we can say seven, 14, and because that number is bigger, we're gonna keep going up. So we say seven, 14, 15, 16, and there it is, okay? So if we're gonna go down to a smaller number, then we're gonna have to take away from that double. But if we're going up to a bigger number, we can add to that double, okay? So I'm gonna give you one on here, and I want you to see if you can mentally figure it out. What if I had four plus, um, Six. Well, I hope that you know that one because that is, oh, you can't see that, can you? I hope you know that one because that is a 10, buddy. But what I would say is 4, 8, 9, 10 because those are two away. So we got to add those two back. So it would be 10. But I do hope that you know that 6 and 4 are 10 buddies. If I used a 3 plus um, 5, okay. In my mind, these are two away. So what I'm gonna say is three, six, seven, eight, because there's two more. Okay, let me do one more, and then I'm gonna let you loose to practice on the other ones. What if I had eight plus six? We can do this two ways. If I start with my eight and I go down to my six, it means that my double is gonna be pretty big, so I've gotta take away two. Or I can start with my six and double it, and then I can still add two more. So let's start with my eight, and I'm gonna go down because I like to start with my top number, it's just more what I'm comfortable with. So I'm gonna say eight, 16, 15, 14. Because again, if I double my eight, that makes my number too big. So I gotta back it down a little bit. But if I started with my six and I go to my eight, I can actually add two more because that number is bigger. So I'm gonna say six, 12, 13, 14. And there it is at 14, okay? Now, if this seemed a little bit foggy, that's okay. Remember that this is something that we would have done in class and we would have done with um, like unifix cubes and we would have done with cotton balls and would have done with a lot of manipulatives and a lot of fun things. Um, and so right now, because we're so far apart, it's really hard to do those kinds of things. So if this made sense to you, fantastic. You can take those sheets and you run with it and you do it and you do it well. If this was really confusing, try watching the video again and see if it sinks in. If it doesn't sink in, don't worry about it. Don't panic and don't stress about it. You still have some backup tools. You still have your touch points. 
you still have um, number lines, you still have all those other things we've talked about this, this year to help you figure out those tools. And we will help you get back in the groove of things when school goes back into session, okay? So don't stress and don't panic if this did not make any sense, okay? But we'll get there and we're gonna keep on doing more math tip, tips and tricks as we go along. Alrighty, so we'll see y'all soon and good luck on your sheet that I sent you. Okay, bye-bye.